Hello everyone, and welcome to the Laughing Hydra Gaming Channel. My name is Larry Mack, and today we are going to be talking about Dungeons & Dragons. More specifically, I will review and give a DM walkthrough of a one-shot adventure by the name of A Most Potent Brew. I found this adventure on a great website called the Dungeon Masters Guild. If you're looking for fan-made or older D&D modules or extra game content, I highly recommend that you check out this website. It has tons of these available and from all different editions. Another cool thing that I like to do is find some older modules that I'd like to run and then find a way to homebrew and update them to 5e. It has a price of pay what you want, but I do recommend that you pay at least a dollar as it supports the creator Winghorn Press for making such a great one shot. The adventure hook or setup of this adventure is that there is an establishment called the Wizard's Tower Brewing Company. And the owner, a little known by the name of Glowkindle, is looking for some adventures to help him out with the problem. So personally, I run this adventure on Roll20, and I'm going to show you just how I have it set up. If you're playing in person, feel free to use maps or just do theater of the mind. Personally, I like using some, some sort of a loading screen. Uh, this way, the adventurers can kind of introduce their characters and go over what they're doing or how they found out about the adventure. And of course, you could do this any way that you want, which is one of the amazing things about D&D. In the written adventure, it states that Glowkindle put up flyers or has talked to a lot of local innkeepers, and he's spreading the word that he needs the job done. So that's a fine adventure hook. It's personally what I've used. And then I actually had all the adventures kind of show up at Glowkindle's establishment and enter one at a time and introduce their characters. So this is just a tavern map that I found online. It does not come with the module. It's not 100% needed, but I liked it. I wanted the adventurers to show up to the establishment, introduce themselves to Glowkindle, and then from there progress into the actual adventure. And now from here on out, there's going to be spoilers. So if you are a player, I recommend that you watch no further, especially if you plan on playing this event. Uh, this is for DMs only, so all you pesky players, you know, Watch another video about D&D, &D, and not this one, please. Okay, so now from here, you're going to want the players to introduce themselves to Glowkindle, and then have Glowkindle explain what's going on. And what's happening is, is that Glowkindle is business, is doing very well. He's selling all kinds of beers and spirits, and he's trying to expand his operations. So in order to expand his operations, he's trying to expand his storage cellar. He was doing this by hiring workers, and while the workers were down there, they were attacked by giant rats. And that's where the adventurers come in. So he wants these adventurers to go into the cellar and clear out these rats. And then not only does he want them to clear out the rats, but he wants them to figure out A, where the rats are coming from, and then B figure out how to stop them from entering so that this problem doesn't persist. So now Glowkindle offers a juicy reward of 25 gold pieces per player in order to clear out the basement. Now hopefully your players are nice and they are up for the adventure. Uh, every so often that you will get some players in a one-shot especially where they want to do all kinds of different things and unfortunately you have to kind of railroad them into doing this, but uh, that's where the the... The plot goes from here. So then from here, I would lead them to the kitchens, at least on this map. And then there is a little, little cellar door, and I would then instruct them, you know, Glowkindle will walk, will walk them into there and then open the cellar door and then lead them down into the basement and then kind of, you know, take care of the problem and report to me when you're done. He also instructs them that any treasures that, he, that they find down there, other than his uh, brewing equipment, are theirs to keep. So that's another little incentive for your players. So now this map did come with the adventure. This is the main battle map and exploration map. So the players will come down these stairs and enter uh, part one. So in part one, you could read, uh, the wooden stairs creak as you descend into the cool, dry air of the cellar, which is infused with the smell of beer and damp fur. Somewhere in the darkness, you hear the scrambling sound of claws on floorboards and a faint squeaky noise. 
So I have a pro membership on Roll20, which allows me to do dynamic lighting. And if you look at the bottom of the map, you might see these li this like V that's lighter. That's because that I have the lighting in effect on the map. You can or cannot do this, but the beer cellar is supposed to be dark. It adds a little bit of feel, but um, a lot of the adventurers are going to have dark vision anyway. Or, you know, they could just ask uh, Glow Kindle for a torch. So as they make their way into the basement, um, it suggests that when half of the adventurers uh, enter the basement and they're fully down these stairs, that these eight rats are going to basically try to ambush them. And you're going to use... Uh, the rat, the rat's stealth versus the player's perception, and see if they're going to get surprised or not. So, depending on how new your players are, uh, you're going to want to kind of take this with a grain of salt and run it the way that you think is necessary. Because these eight rats on new players, especially if you're playing with a small amount of players, like less than four or even four, these rats can definitely kill a group of one level one players. So just kind of be mindful of that. And this is going to be an awesome uh, introduction to combat because it's going to teach them things like um, how advantage is going to work because of all the different rats being together and uh, close confinement with space. And then there's like the different lighting effects. So uh, it's a pretty interesting first combat. And then next what you would want to do as the adventure suggests and as actually I would suggest is once half or so of the rats have been destroyed, have the other four flee. That will add a little bit of liveliness to the game, showing that these are real creatures, and uh, if they seem outnumbered or in dire a dire situation, that they're going to take off. Then also, it's going to set up the events in Area 2. After the players have finished with the rats in Area 1, you have them move on through the hole in the wall to Area 2 is a long hallway that uh, dead ends to the left and then right goes around a corner and you could read this description from the module itself that says through the hole in the wall you can see a dusty stone corridor its floor lying about a foot below that of the cellar in which you stand over to the left you could see the start of a staircase buried in collapsed masonry earth and rubble block the way completely to the right, the passage heads around a corner, but on the wall you can just make out what appears to be writing in a clear gold script. So then right around the corner, you're going to notice these like different colored objects on the floor, and that is going to be a mosaic puzzle. And what you want to do is have the players discover one of the rats that fled dead on this puzzle. And you can let them know somehow that, like, the rat was cut in half or however you want to set up. It's supposed to be a blade trap, but um, obviously you can set it up however you want. From here, this is where you can give the players this little handout. And the golden writing that was glimmering on the wall is as such. Dawn breaks with stirring air as sun shines down on a new day fair. Midday blaze bakes earth and grass. The farmer waits for heat to pass. Evening cool brings water, wine, drink, and laughter, passing time. Night sees shining, roaring fire as wood and coals burn on the pyre. And what this is alluding to is this puzzle of the mosaic. So basically, uh, the players are going to have to figure out that um, each line, which also corresponds to a line of the mosaic, uh, has a meaning. So it has basically the safe spots that your players can walk through in order to get through. So dawn breaks with stirring air. So air, they could step on the air portion of the mosaic. And then the next part where it says uh, earth is your, your main clue, they could step on the green part. And then for the evening cool brings water. So now water is going to be that small bottom dark blue. And then for the last part where it says uh, the roaring fire, so fire is your last clue, and then they can step on the fire. And then any player that does that will be able to pass through unharmed. Otherwise, if they step on an opposite uh, piece, then they're going to have to make a DC 12 dexterity save, taking 5 
which is like 1d10, but 5 is just going to be the average. And this would be slashing damage from the blade trap. Now the trap is written this way, however I did have players try tying in elements from spells, like for example they had um, things like create water, and they would do create water on the second one. If they do something with elements in the order of which the mosaic corresponds, it's completely up to you, but you may want to allow, allow them to pass, but otherwise, you know, just keep it as written. I really like this. It took my players maybe five minutes to figure it out, maybe ten, but it was a very good uh, storytelling element, and it also is a very cool puzzle, and it kind of teaches your players to work together, and it's something kind of unique and fun that isn't normal combat that they're going to have to get around. So I actually really enjoy this part of the module. So now, after your players have successfully navigated the hall, they're going to come up the north way, and then they're going to either continue north, or they're going to go west. So if they go north, they're going to enter what is the well room, and if they go west, they're going to enter the lab. So if they do enter the well room, you could read this. In the center of the small room ahead of you is a large stone well, topped with a wooden handle and the rotten remnants of heavily frayed rope that descends into the shaft. In the far right corner, the ceiling has collapsed slightly, and a narrow shaft of weak sunlight shines through the narrow hole. To the far left is a plain wooden table, crusted with dirt and dust, and laden with old plates, buckets, and other strange pieces of tableware. So on that table that I described, uh, anyone that makes a DC-12 perception wisdom check while searching the room uh, will find some old plates that are tarnished silver, and if they're cleaned up, they're worth about 50 gold. But anybody that enters the room and makes a lot of noise is going to awaken three giant centipedes that are going to crawl up from the well, and they're going to try to knock players out and drag them into the well and eat them. And the well is 50 feet deep uh, with about 10 feet of water at the bottom, so if they fall in, they're not going to get injured. But that's basically the gist of this room. And then the fun really happens if they go to the west. So the west is noted as the lab, and the description reads, The door opens into what once have been a lab or a workroom. To your left sits a smoldering desk and the shattered remnants of alchemical glassware, while the center of the room is dominated by a set of tall bookcases arranged back to back. Around the corner, however, are scorch marks and signs of countless small fires and the air is filled with the smell of smoke and burnt meat. The wooden furniture is blackened and burned in places, while that may have once been a pile of books have been reduced to ash. Singed traces of what may be webbing hang from the ceiling. As you enter, you feel something crunch beneath your feet. Glancing down, you realize that it's the charred hindquarters of a giant rat. So I think this script sets the mood pretty well for what awaits the players in this room, which is a giant inferno spider. The inferno spider is kind of hiding out in the southwest corner of the room, and unless your players are being extra careful and like searching everything, the spider is supposed to kind of get the jump on them, and this is the big bad of the entire adventure, so this fight is supposed to hurt a little bit. It's pretty similar to a modified giant spider, except for the fact that it has this pretty cool ability where it will web, and the web causes fire damage. So it's basically a web that's like a breath recharge, so it'll recharge on like a 5 or 6 rolled from a 6-sided dice every turn. And if it hits, the player is going to take some damage and then be restrained, and then at the start of each of their turns, they're going to take even more damage unless they can break out of the web, which I think is a pretty cool mechanic. If the players beat the Infernal Spider, um, I'm sure that they're going to search the room, and if they do, they're going to find some um, things from the lab. Uh, one of the things that they may notice is that there's a wizard's book that contains detect magic, identify, and the arcane lock spells. Um, so if you have a wizard in your party, that they're really going to like this. And if not, they can just sell this for a bunch of gold, but it's some nice treasure. So once the players clear this room, we get to the last room of the dungeon, which is the storeroom. So once the players enter this room, you can read, 
The rear wall of this small room is lined with sturdy looking wooden shelves. Clearly these were once laden with bottles and glass vials, but over the years many have been reduced to glittering shards of glass on the floor. There's a flicker of movement among the wreckage and you see a small black rat lapping up the last remnants of liquid left in the shattered remains of a dark blue bottle. So here, basically what's happening is you have a little rat on the floor, and he's drinking out of these bottles. And if you haven't figured it out, these potion bottles, which were left over from the wizard's laboratory, are what's causing these abomination of creatures. So this rat is drinking a potion of enlargement, and this is like a little uh, timed thing. So after about a minute, he's going to transform into a giant rat. So your players are either going to come in and immediately kill the rat, which they're probably going to do because they're going to be traumatized from the rats in the first room. Or they might talk and then all of a sudden you can have the rat grow and then they're going to be in, stuck in combat again. And then to add a little bit of flavor, you can say that the potion that it was drinking on says Ocean of Enlargement. And then they're going to figure it out. And then you could say, you know, if, if they're investigating that they find Essence of Fire L and then cut off again. So you have like an Essence of Fire Elemental as well. And that's where this giant Infernal Spider came from. And then for treasure in this room, there could be a handful of full bottles left on the shelves or on the floor or wherever. Uh, two of them are going to be Potions of Healing. There's going to be a Potion of Invisibility and then a Potion of Vitality. And then once this room is cleared out, that's basically the end of the adventure. They could return a gold kindle and tell them about what they found and how they cleared out the dungeon and how the wizard's laboratory was still kind of hiding underneath his brewery and all that fun stuff. And then, you know, gold kindle will buy them all around and the adventures can kind of continue on their way. Uh, overall, I really, really enjoyed this adventure. I thought it was an awesome one shot. It's really cool to work into current campaigns. You could just have this as like a pickup. If your players are in the inn, you could have them just like kind of lead them out of town to somebody else's inn or somebody else's tavern or to like a new town. Or even if your adventures are walking around in another town, you could just have this happen. Um, it's, it's short, but it's very cool. Uh, I enjoyed it. The players really liked it a lot. And um, it, it didn't take a ton of time at all. I think... We ran somewhere around three hours, but uh, the last one that I ran, but it was a lot of new players. So um, I hope you enjoyed this overview. I hope you enjoyed my review. Um, if you do, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will continue making more D&D &D gaming content. Thank you very much.